are nowhere near out of the woods on this. We are flattening the curve. We do have reasons to feel like the work that we've done is paying off. As we re-engage, we have to do so slowly. This is not a political conversation. It's not a political negotiation. This is about the public health. That's precisely what these emergency powers are all about. And so as I use them, we cite all the um, sources of that power so that people understand this is the very kind of crisis that they are used in. I don't enjoy using all of these levers of this office, but I have to do this to save lives. And that is what centers every decision we've made. There is your governor, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. There, she was actually pounding on the podium to make emphasis during a very difficult day yesterday, talking about the orders that she has had to put in place to help us get through the coronavirus crisis and fight back COVID-19 here in the state of Michigan. Meanwhile, uh, members of the legislature say, hey, they got some ideas too, and they'd like to be included in the conversation. And uh, we got lawsuits and, and arguments and protesters, and uh, it's, it's getting a little crazy up in Lansing. We'll talk about that. Right here closer to home, we got a lot of awfully great things happening. First of all, it's a beautiful day here in uh, the metro Oakland County area. And uh, I hope we get out and enjoy the weather and get some exercise today. Uh, my name is Dave Scott. If you're watching on one of our television outlets, hi there. Awful good to have you. I'm sitting here in our Lakes FM radio studio on Walla Lake Road in West Bloomfield, observing every possible rule and regulation, including keeping things clean, which we do at the beginning of every broadcast. We get the the wipes out and make sure we wipe everything down, just like I know you're doing at your office and your home. We we wore the masks for a day or two, but that just kind of got in the way of the radio broadcast. So we're keeping our six-foot distance here, doing the very best we can. Tyler Keefe will be in here in just a couple of moments, and we'll get uh, rolling on our show. I want to thank everyone involved that's making this broadcast possible. Let's start with um, the fine people at the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission. That's who we work for in West Bloomfield. They operate Civic Center TV channel 15 on comcast and channel 99 on at&t and lakes fm but there's more we want to thank the birmingham area municipal access channel that's in birmingham bingham farms beverly hills and franklin where we are today and a good to see all of you watching on channel 15 there we want to invite you to go to uh, channel 99 if you're an at&t subscriber you can tune in on channel 99 go to the cover government areas and uh, tune in to uh, to west bloomfield or birmingham and you'll find our broadcast right there big thank you to uh, every day we, we we want to thank somebody who is uh, putting us on their facebook live channel and today that is a greater west bloomfield chamber of commerce so thank you very much and uh, you can tune in to us there on facebook live at the greater west bloomfield chamber of commerce page yesterday we were on the oakland university page and uh, thousands thousands of people were watching so uh, we like doing that every day and this show would not be the show without our three great radio stations 89.3 lakes fm uh thank you to everyone at uh, at lakes fm and we are here in the studios 88.1 WBFH, the Biff at Bloomfield Hills, broadcasting from Bloomfield Hills High School. Ron Whittable over there uh, runs that operation. Thank you to him. Thank you to Pat Watson, superintendent of schools in Bloomfield Hills, for making the radio station available. And uh, and then the Monster, WAHS. I say the Monster because it's got like 10 times the signal of our other radio stations. So we're really, really happy to be on 89.5. Avondale Community Radio at Avondale High School. And uh, thanks to Logan there who gets us on the air every day. And a big thank you and shout out to Dr. Schwartz in uh, in the Avondale School District for making the radio station available. So today on the program, we're going to touch a little bit on what's going on in Lansing. State of emergency extended by the governor. Uh, Republicans say they will sue. The, the Michigan legislature, the Republicans at least, in the legislature uh, are not too happy with the governor they they would like to see they would like to see more of a county by county approach to 
to, to, to these closures. And uh, the governor says she's got the authority to do what she's doing. The legislature says we're not so sure. That battle's going on. We're going to watch. Meanwhile, uh, again, we were on the national news with protesters in the state's capital, um, you know, making a lot of noise and, uh, and carrying guns. So um, I, I report it. You decide um, how you feel about all that. Closer to home... We are going to talk to the mayor of Rochester in just a couple of moments, see how things are going there. We're also going to talk to Debbie Binder. She is the township clerk in West Bloomfield. They've got a meeting at 2 o'clock today. They're going to open up their offices again in West Bloomfield. We'll see how that's going. And Debbie, we had originally scheduled to talk to her today about the census. So we want to get some idea how things are going. Lots of different programs available. Oakland County comes out yesterday with a $12 million program to help businesses. How is your business doing and how are you doing financially? We're going to get a little bit of help and advice from Tim Ferriss, the group director and president of Upstream Investment Partners. A lot of road construction going on. The coronavirus is not stopping the yellow barrels from popping up. Tyler Keefe, who walks in the studio. And uh, as a result, you're going to be dodging barrels, especially in West Bloomfield and Birmingham and, and in Troy. Craig Bryson, Senior Manager of Communications of the Road Commission for Oakland County, checks in all via Zoom. Uh, and then later on in the show, we are going to talk to Mary Manugian. She is a state representative of the, of the uh, 40th District, and uh, we checked in with her earlier. She was fantastic. We are uh, really delighted to have her back. Stuart Sherman checks in, the owner and founder of Tax Resolve and uh, also Birmingham City Commissioner. So uh, we will talk to uh, Stuart later on, and then we're going to wrap up the show with my friends uh, Byron and Michelle Kinselmo, who whose daughter was just tested the other day at Henry Ford. And uh, we'll see how she is feeling, how they are doing. And they're going to be doing a concert tonight on Facebook Live. So we'll tell you all about that and how you can enjoy some music, even if you can't go out to uh, one of our closed clubs, establishments, restaurants, bars, other. Tyler Keefe, quick good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Dave? Good. I I wiped down your area, but you probably... I'm going to hand this over to you. You probably need a little more wipage probably, going on probably need some more, <laughs> over more there wow. uh, to make sure we're totally complying. Everything going well in your world? Everything's going well, yeah. Excellent. Well. Excellent. So um, uh, West Winfield Township is going to likely open their offices. Why don't you talk about that real quick while I get things set up here for our next guest? Yeah, today at 2 p.m. they're going to have another one of their virtual township board meetings. This is a special meeting, only one item on the agenda at this time. Uh, and that is they're going to discuss how they will gra- how they are going to go about reopening the op- regular operations of the township. So uh, that's going to be discussed and possibly voted on today by the township board. All right. Meanwhile, we are going to head over to Rochester. We are delighted now to be joined by the mayor of Rochester, who checks in via Zoom, Stuart Bixon. Mayor Bixon, good morning and welcome to the Megacast. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Well, it's awful good to have you. Um, you know, we've, we've not had a chance to talk on, on the broadcast, but we and we all see all the national news and the national reports and everything going on in Lansing. But I think most of, of how all this affects us is uh, is happening right here at home in our communities. And, uh, and I just got to tell you, I'm in Rochester all the time. It's a beautiful community. I, I just wonder how things are going in Rochester. Well, I think things are going as well as can be expected. Of course, our downtown is shut down. So, you know, we have a thriving downtown with restaurants and shops and things like that, that we're very proud of and is very successful. And that's completely shut down. So of course, that's a, that's a bad thing. We have a big hotel here, the Royal Park Hotel, which is shut down. Um, so that's bad. But at the same time, um, we're hopeful that maybe we're getting past this and um, you know, we're working on a kind of a reinvention plan when the city opens up and a lot of our restaurants are having a, a thriving takeout business. So, you know, we're trying to make the best of the situation. Um, you know, our city is up and running well with our police and fire and, and, and DPW. So, you know, we're doing as well as we can and we're still trying to be optimistic in a, which is course a difficult time it is it is difficult but uh you know none of this happens without a lot of work and planning and and i know you've been working hard I, i'm curious i'm glad to hear 
I'm glad to hear, Mayor Bixon, that you in Rochester are working on uh, what's going to be the next step. And you're thinking about it. And let me just tell you, everyone, whether they live in Pontiac or Troy or West Bloomfield or Birmingham and are tuning in today, everyone loves Rochester. We love your Christmas parade. We love your your downtown. It's a great community. Um, I just ride my bicycle in, in your community the other day. Uh, absolutely fantastic community. We want to see it thrive post uh, mm-hmm. lockdown, if you will. So I, I'm curious how, how your plans are coming and if there's anything you want to share about what your strategies are as things open up. Well, I think, you know, I, I, I think that we're talking about um, one, we're going to emphasize, you know, the local a- aspect because, you know, we need to take care of our local people. So, you know, shop downtown, come to our area downtown. So, let, you know, let's, let's emphasize what we have. I think also we are really concerned about making things and people feel safe, you know, social distancing. How, how is that going to work? Are we going to have, we have a, a big um, farmer's market that's going to open uh, May 23rd, assuming, well, that's an essential service from the governor, but we're trying to say, Hey, how can we do this? Make it a big success, but also be responsible, have social distancing, make people feel safe. Um, so that's kind of the things we're working on. Do we need to have masks? If, if we do, we need to get masks to the businesses and things. So we actually formed a committee with all of the different areas, um, you know, local governments, uh, local nonprofits, local businesses, and we have kind of subcommittees where we're talking about each one of these issues. So, you know, people need to feel safe. People need to feel comfortable. And um, we're trying everything we can to kind of anticipate that for our big opening, which we hope will be soon. Do you, do you have a target date? Do you, are you just waiting for the governor and uh, other folks in Lansing to give you some indication when? Well, when I mean, I, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the governor is going to tell us when we can open restaurants and, and, and do things. But, but a lot of things we can do, like I said, the takeout business is, is thriving here. And so we're, you know, we've, we've had, we have free parking downtown now, so everybody can come up and get their carry outs and carry out and pickups from businesses without having to pay for parking. So we've done that. Um, but again, we have the farmer's market that we're opening up that we think is going to be successful. So we're planning on that to make it as successful as possible, but at the same time safe. And I think the hotel is going to be opening up pretty soon. So we're kind of phasing it in probably like the state. Um, we think it's, uh, you know, we're hoping it's going to open up, uh, pretty soon. And, but we want to, we know people want to be out and about, we know people have cabin fever like we all do, but we want to make it where it's safe and a place where people feel comfortable. So that's what You know, and, it, and, uh, Mayor Bixon, Stuart Bixon, by the way, joining us via Zoom right here on the Megacast. You know, one of the things that might happen, too, this summer is things do start to open up here in the state of Michigan. Um, you know, some people might not want to travel up north as much as they have in the past. And, right. you know, you think of downtown Rochester, it's... It's it's a lot like you know walking around in some of our downtown communities up north too. You got a really great quaint downtown with shops and restaurants and a lot of fun and you know you can get a little bit of that up up north atmosphere in a community like Rochester and downtown Birmingham and others. Well, that's what I talked about. Man, you 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 should work for our downtown development authority. I like the way you put all this stuff. <laughs> uh, you're doing a great, you're doing a great job. Um, but yeah, it's. You know, we talk about local. We one of the things we pride our city on is walkability. So we have like a river walk. You can walk downtown. We have a lot of really nice parks and stuff. And we're one of the few communities that we um, we have the Paint Creek Trail, we have the Clinton River Trail, and we have the the Macomb Orchard Trail all meet right in Rochester. So it's an easy place if you bike, if you run, if you want to walk. Um, so yeah, there, there, there's a lot of that. And, you know, we really think that people want to, might feel more comfortable outside. So we're talking about how do we have some events and stuff that are outside that again, are, are safe for people. So we're talking about some ideas like, you know, on our park, you know, the top of our parking decks, can we have some outdoor events that people feel safe in? So, you know, we do have a lot. And I think, as you said, I think people, 
might not feel as comfortable traveling distances. I know people aren't gonna you know, go to Chicago for the weekend, fly around. So coming local, coming to Rochester is, is a great option. And um, yeah, I mean, even today, it's like, an, it's, it's like a nice day to kind of walk around town. Yeah, and, and if you've not walked around downtown Rochester or taken a bike ride or parked in the area and walked around the community, it is a beautiful place. Everyone that lives, almost everyone that's listening right now already knows that. They don't they don't need me, to, Dave Scott, to tell them that. But, uh, hey, it's uh, good luck with everything. We hope things go well. I know, you know, the, re, the stark reality of everything, all the municipalities that uh, we service here in our broadcast area, um, you know, in the state of Michigan, uh, that we all are going to have our hands full dealing with the financial impact uh, based on the reduced tax revenues. Uh, do you have any thought of what kind of impact it may, may have on on, uh, on your city, Mayor Bixon? Well, you know, fortunately, I mean, it's, you know, it's going to have an effect on everybody. Fortunately, we are and we have been able through, you know, I like to think conservative management. We are in very good shape financially. So, um, and, and also kind of the communities that are more kind of bedroom communities, uh, you know, typically are, are in better shape because we're not as dependent on the state for money and, and things. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to be hurt, uh, but we're planning for it. We, we've been planning for it. We have a strong fund balance. We have a strong city council that believes in, you know, strong fiscal management. So we've been practicing that. So actually we're, we're in pretty good shape. Not that it's not going to hurt and, and things, you know, our revenues are down and, you know, all kinds of different ways that, you know, you think of, but, you know, most of our revenue is, is tied into property taxes. I think, you know, 75, 80% of that. So, you know, we're, we're going to be hurt like everybody else, but we're, we're in pretty good shape. So, um, you know, that's a good thing in these difficult times. Stuart Bixon is our guest. Uh, before we say uh, so long to the mayor of Rochester, uh, where are you at with city services this afternoon? West Bloomfield, we're, we're, we're getting ready to cover their uh, special meeting today. They're getting ready to work on plans to get their town hall open. Uh, can you talk about what's going on in Rochester? Yeah, so our police and fire and emergency DPW people have been continually working and you know doing a great job. And, um, and actually we've been paying them a uh, time and a half for the, you know, the, the risky, great job that they do. Um, but we are looking as soon as the, um, you know, as, as soon as the governor allows us, and I, you know, we're looking at maybe a, a week or two for offices and stuff opening up, that we will be opening up city hall. But again, with all the social distancing and, and things. So we are working on that now. We have had our city meetings by Zoom, um, which we are allowed to do, and they've been working out well. The planning commission, the BDA, the city council meetings have all been happening. Our government's been functioning, um, but we are looking back to, you know, looking forward to someday soon having our city council meetings back, you know, open to the public, you know, face to face, uh, but it will be different. You know, there'll be a new normal and you know, we used to sit up at city council right on top of each other, and now we're going to have to have social distancing and stuff. So we're working on all that, but we're looking to have, you know, the rest of the city government up and running. But, you know, a lot of people are working from home, so, you know, we've, we've been you know, pretty successful in doing it. But, yeah, we are hoping to open up in a, in a week or so. Stuart Bixon, uh, Mayor of Rochester, there's probably a select few of us that uh, – Jump up and down for joy and put a big smile on our face that because we're excited to go to a, a municipal meeting. But that, that's kind of the business that we're in here. So uh, we, we love going to our municipal meetings. And I think people will be really happy when uh, things open up and maybe see some extra people come on in and say hello yeah. and hopefully congratulate all those that have uh, really helped get us through this in all of our local communities. And uh, so that, that'll be a good day. It's right around the corner. Anything you want yeah, to add before we say so long? Yeah. I mean, just interesting. I had a virtual coffee with the mayor and I thought, well, I wonder if people are going to uh, even call in and stuff. And a lot of people called in, had a lot of questions and, and stuff. So people are, are interested in the government, interested in how things are doing, you know, what's happening. And so I think that's a good sign people are involved. And it was a good opportunity for me to kind of get information out for the city and what's going on. But, yeah, we're looking forward to um, back in the day where we can 
you know, in the new norm and the new social distancing back to people and having human interaction, of course. All right, Mayor. Thank you very much. I like that uh, coffee with the mayor, virtual coffee with the mayor. Who yeah. would have, you know, you just get creative, you, you you pivot, you come up with a new normal, you come up with a new plan, and, uh, and uh, you know, maybe we are all learning new strategies to make we, things better as we go forward. We we shall get through this, and there will be better days ahead. I'm, I'm convinced of it, and it's not going to be easy, but I am convinced that things will Tyler. be back to Tyler Keefe, we have Tyler Keefe. We 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 welcome another optimist into our uh, into our there broadcast here. Thank you, Mayor. Good to talk to you. Uh, be well, and thank you for sharing your time with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good day. You too. He is the Mayor of Rochester, Stuart Bixon, joining us here to kick off the mega cast for this beautiful Friday in the Metro Detroit and Oakland County area. I'm Dave Scott over on the other side of the studio uh, on his cell phone, like every other millennial, is Tyler Keefe. I mean, some of us are working, too. <laughs> I know you're working. I'm just, yeah, giving, you a, just giving you a hard Tough time. Crap. It's okay. Uh, Tim Ferriss checks in in a couple of minutes. He's the group director, president, upstream investment partners. We'll chat with him in a moment. Um, headlines today, state of emergency extended by the governor. Uh, members of the legislature say, well, you know, we really would have liked to be included in that process, Tyler. Yeah, the, it's it's becoming a big fight there. And uh, the governor made a huge step last night with uh, taking the emergency declaration to her, her own hands. Uh, it, it's only going to get bigger from here. Michigan job losses, according to Cranes Magazine today, uh, Cranes Detroit Business, Michigan job losses top 1.26 million since March. That's a huge number. And uh, just, you know, again, back to the grassroots level, I, I saw a friend of mine post on Facebook yesterday. Uh, in fact, someone who used to work here post on Facebook yesterday that she has been unable to get any of her unemployment, and she thinks that it's maybe because she was a 1099 worker. We'll talk to Tim Ferriss about that in a minute. Maybe he can give us some insight. But, you know, it, it hasn't been easy for everybody. Some people have applied for for programs and grants and unemployment, and, and it hasn't all made it out to the people. So uh, we understand there are challenges, and with 1.26 million people out of work since March here in Michigan, uh, you can understand why there are people that want to get, you know, people that want to get get us all back to work as soon as possible, Tyler. Yeah, especially with the people that are on, that are contract work, 1099 people, uh, freelancers. Those are people that have been out of that have been out of work throughout this entire process, and you know some of them have been able to get through the unemployment process, but some of them are really struggling with that. And with millions of people out of work, and a significant fraction of those people uh, that are out of work being freelancers and contract workers, it's imperative that we get them back to work, just like those that are full-time workers like you and I. You know, I just thought about it. I just added another note to our COVID-19 vocabulary that we oh, run right. through on the show often. Uh, th those people would be called members of the gig industry, the 1099. I never heard that term before yeah. all this. Gig it, economy, gig industry. The yeah. gig industry. All right. Yeah. All right, gig industry folks. We love you. We're doing the yep. best we can for you. And then uh, this, this story caught my eye today in one of our Metropolitan Papers. No Memorial Day camping at Michigan State Parks. So that Memorial Day is off the table. The rustic campsites are expected to open on June 10th. And uh, then the, the marinas and the conventional campsites are going to open up on the 22nd of June. So we're getting to get a roadmap of how things yeah. are going to go. Con construction on the 7th. Campsites for Memorial Day, no, but they're going to start to open up in June. Yeah, they're, it's it's coming, and it, it will be here eventually. And uh, it's good that we have some sort of guidance as to when that when we can anticipate that. So maybe that will ease some people's anxiety about it, knowing that, okay, we're not going to get it at the end of May on Memorial Day, but a few weeks later, just a couple weeks into June, we'll be into our camping season. All right, we want to thank everyone who is a big part of the Megacast here today, and that is including uh, the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, operators of Civic Center TV, where you can watch the program right now on Channel 15 on Comcast, Channel 99 and AT&T, the Birmingham Area Municipal Access Channel. We want to thank them for being a part of this broadcast today. They are also on Channel 15 on Comcast and have our video up on their webpage. We thank them very much for being a big part of this and 
Good morning and hello to everyone in Birmingham. Thank you for being with us. Our radio stations, 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 WBFH, The Bip. WAHS 89.5 Avondale Community Radio. Thanks to all of you, and thank you very much to the West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce who has us up on their Facebook Live channel today. Hey, Tyler, we have huge news oh. to report. Uh, can we can we just leave it as a tease, and we'll do it later on on the broadcast? You know what? We can, we can do that. All right. Another big addition oh. to the Megacast and a, per, a permanent addition if you will, to uh, to all that we're doing to get get the word out to everybody uh, electronically and and virtually. So, uh, joining us now in the megacast again via Zoom is our good friend Tim Ferris. He is the group director president of Upstream Investment <laughs> Partners, and uh, he joins us via Zoom. Hey Tim, how you doing today? Oh, I got to hit a button here. Okay, forgive me. Tim cannot hear us. Can you hear us now, Tim? Yes, I can. All right, sorry about that. So, welcome, no welcome to the MegaCast. How you feeling today? Everything going okay? I'm feeling good. Thanks, thanks for having me back on. It's a great Friday today. It is. Uh, it is great to have you here. So I'm just going to read. I mean, we normally don't do this. Is an informal show. I mean, we're just, it's just a little community, you know, <laughs> radio show. I'm just going to read what our producer, the notes our producer gave yeah, me. Yeah. Said Tim wants to speak about a great consolidated summary of the CARES Act that he saw and how it impacts 401ks and IRAs. So there you go. There's the setup yes. right from the producer, Tim. Okay, here we go. Okay. So um, in the current events that we went through back in March 20th, they released the CARES Act. Um, what we saw with the CARES Act was kind of the first phase, which was the PPP and a lot of the other access to dollars that people had available. On a side note, I'm going to just mention the PPP. Um, I know that a lot of funds became available this week. I've talked to a lot of frustrated folks, but understand that the process is a lot more equitable this time around, and the dollars will come out to us a little bit slower, but they will come out much more equitable. Hey, Tim, can um, I just and, jump, Tim, can I jump in on that yes. real quick? Um, the yep. report I saw in Cranes today echoes mm -hmm. what I'm hearing from a lot of people in that the community banks are really doing a bang up job right now uh, getting, getting and if you want to cut the red tape and slam through the bureaucracy and this is no criticism of the bigger banks that I, I do banking with one of them but but I just want to give a big pat on the back to the community banks they're really making it work for a lot of folks and I wonder if you're hearing the same thing absolutely yes and this is one of the things that I wanted to bring up is that it's not it's not against the law to apply it as many banks as you can. It's just you can't take loans from everybody. So I've had a lot of people that I've worked with. I've worked closely with my tax advisor here locally in West Bloomfield. And he's had a lot of clients that had questions. And the challenge was is that, okay, everybody worked with the major banks. And they're one of a gazillion that have applied. And they're just waiting for feedback. And what we found through this, though, was is lists of the local banks that you didn't have to be a client with and we started applying across the board. I mean, as far away as is in Idaho, there are banks that will accommodate you. So take advantage of the smaller banks first and foremost, if you haven't applied already. Um, secondly, that's where I wanted to talk about today. And this kind of got uh, um, overshadowed by the PPP program, but it is part of the CARES Act. And what the CARES Act is doing is, is trying to create some liquidity for people that are kind of caught in the jam. It's either, A, you've had the you've had the virus or B, you've been at home for now, gosh, going on six, seven weeks without being able to necessarily collect a paycheck. And our challenge has been is how do those folks access money when we've had all these other um, challenges as well as, as the funds have been rolling out, whether it be through the unemployment or whether it be through um, the PPP program. With the CARES Act, they, they really kind of addressed financially our retirement accounts and our health health savings accounts. And the first part I'm going to go over is with our retirement accounts. All qualified plans have the ability to roll $100,000 out of those programs this year. Um, and it will not be subject to a 10% penalty, which is the normal penalty for premature distributions. The second advantage to this program is, is the funds can either A, be paid back into your retirement accounts over a three-year period of time, or you can pay the taxes over that three-year period of time, your prerogative. Um, 
that is a real great flexibility. And this is the first time in many cases, like if somebody has a 401k, their ability to roll dollars out of their 401k is pretty limited to um, basically a hardship withdrawal. Um, and with this program, they're going to be in a position to make a, with, uh, make a withdrawal out of that um, for the CARES Act. So let, the let's, let's talk about, hang on, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just that have access no. to a 401k many times will have the ability to take a loan. And these loans are to be paid back over a five-year period of time. And those loans have been increased to $100,000 or 100% of your 401k, whatever the dollar value is. That's pretty dramatic for folks to be able to move money out of their 401k like that. And then uh, finally, the other aspect here is with regard to retirees or people that are um, now 72 with the RMDs, re Required Minimum Distributions. The government requires us to take a minimum amount out of our retirement accounts on an annual basis. Um, the age was pushed back to 72 as opposed to 70 and a half in the past. And what they've done for 2020, if they, they have deferred the requirements to take the money out of your IRA. All right, Tim. Um, so, so that is no, 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 you're doing fine. I, I actually committed a, uh, a Zoom faux pas here, which everyone uh, watching knows because we've all been Zooming. You ever start Zooming and your microphone is turned off on Zoom and you're just talking and you just think everyone's here and you know it's here. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I did that a minute ago. You didn't hear me. So let me just let me wa rewind okay. the tape here just a little bit. Sure. So um, we get into one of these things where you can, but should you? And, and okay. that's kind of the question I want to ask. So this is really, this is amazing. Go in, <laughs> you, you can pull your, your retirement dollars out early, and it isn't going to cost you a single penny. So you can, but Tim, should you, and when? Okay. So we've got to look at our dollars in a couple different ways. And really, the best way to look at it is a pair of pants. Our back pockets are our long-term dollars, and our front pockets are our short-term dollars. So depending on where we have our dollars um, apportioned will really dictate where we want to draw our money. What we're talking about today, though, is really moving money from right pocket to left pocket, back pocket to front pocket. Um, ideally, you don't want to recommend folks to take money out of an IRA because that's going to break the stride of your retirement plan. But in uh, extreme situations like a pandemic, you can kind of get a pass. Um, the second aspect, too, is, is there's a very advantageous way to pay the money back. If you think about it, we were able to take dollars and then we'll take dollars out of our IRA and we'll say that, OK, so we've seen the market come back dramatically. It's still down. We assume that the market recovers over the next 12 months, two years, whatever the case is. The ability to move your money out of your IRA and just simply we'll say leave it in the same investment, wait three years, give it back you've got that growth at a more attractive tax rate. So a couple of different strategies and it's, it's kind of complicated and I don't want to really get into the weeds, but at a high level, this is something that you need to discuss with both your financial advisor and your tax yeah, advisor. Yeah, but that was kind of my, that's what I was thinking. And that that's why I asked that is that there may be mm -hmm. uh, Tim Ferriss, there may be a financial mm -hmm. benefit to pulling some of that money out, given what's going on. I mean, if you're uh, if you're a little bullish on the market, or your financial advisor is, um, and you they, mm -hmm. they think your 401k may be deteriorating over the next six months or a couple of years, maybe you pull some of this money out, put it in some other investment. At least you have the flexibility. If you don't need the cash, yet we never have the flexibility yeah. to pull money out of our IRA and and do something that some take some alternative strategy. So be careful. Absolutely. Right. But, but there's some uh, options, right? Yeah. And then the second thing that you have to kind of keep in the back of your mind as a consideration, similar to the questions you were asking with our last guest, um, the country as a whole and our government system is putting a lot of money into the economy. And the question is with the decline in the tax basis, how are we going to pay for it? So you have to ask yourself over the next couple of years, are our taxes going to be more or less? And that pretty much answers <laughs> yeah. what the strategy kind of plays into. Yeah, yeah, it does. Tim Ferris, Group Director, President, Upstream Investment Partners. Tim, I don't know if this is uh, in your uh, in your area of expertise, but uh, we are hearing from a lot of folks that are having trouble collecting their unemployment benefits from the state of Michigan yes. and uh, and you know and other um, areas along. It. Some people didn't really get their checks. Um, electronically deposited. I, I I saw some information recently that some of that uh, those paper checks are going to be starting to make their way in the mail. But you have any thoughts? Any uh, any information? Advice for people that that are in yeah. any of those situations? 
Yes, it's it's got to be incredibly frustrating, um, especially with the unemployment system. Um, how I compare is back when I was in. Um, you've got a lot of folks that are out there trying to get those dollars all at the same time. The system's crashed on multiple occasions. Patience is a virtue with regard to getting through with the uh, unemployment department because that is the biggest challenge because infras the infrastructure wasn't there for us. The second aspect with regard to our checks for the folks that that are struggling to get their checks and I'm one of them. Um, in many cases, it's if you normally have to send the IRS a few bucks at the end of the year, you don't have it set up on an automatic deposit. And in those cases, those are the folks that are getting their checks over time. Um, if you go to the irs.gov site, you can plug in your bank information and the funds will be exped expedited that way. So there are ways for you to remedy or try to expedite your dollars and that's simply going to irs.gov and they, that will kind of feed you into the system to be able to kind of update and get a better expectation of your check. The unemployment system, um, what we have seen here um, is a slowdown. We're not seeing quite as many people filing for unemployment this week versus the prior week. So as that kind of crests and starts to slow down, you'll start to see people um, get back in the system and understand that with the unemployment system, it's the date that you filed your unemployment. So the dollars that you're missing by waiting and not getting your funds will come back to you. It's just going to take a little time. And if right. I could touch on one thing real quick with Please. regard to HSA, that that is the other aspect that the um, that the CARES Act covered. Health savings accounts are another form of savings that we can use for our health our health uh, um, our health benefits primarily anything other than our premiums. What's been expanded though, is many things in particular when it comes to over-the-counter items are now covered by HSS, HSAs or FSAs. In particular, um, a women, women's uh, menstruation products, I guess you'd say. Um, that's one aspect and the second piece of information that comes along with the HSA accounts that was really kind of meaningful that we have seen um, is, is that with the HSA accounts now going forward, you're going to be able to use telemedicine, which is a very, very big deal because with the, with the CARES Act, they were able to cover telemedicine, whereas in the past you had to pay a deductible yourself. Now the deductible is not, not being required to pay for telemedicine, well, which in the big picture is great. Tim, I, I'm, gl I'm glad I had a couple of cups of coffee before I came in here today because it's hard to keep all the HSAs, RMDs, 401ks. I, there, you got so many initials you're throwing out out here. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't put a WBLD and a WBFH in there. Uh, but no, we get it. So uh, thank you. And, you know, you just need help. So it's a good time. Uh, there, there are a lot of programs out there, and I, I stay up all night reading this stuff. Not everybody has time. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of programs. Good time to have somebody to, to pick up the phone and call and get some advice on your retirement, on your health savings okay. account, uh, on any of these other programs. And, Tim, you're a good source of that information. You want to share you. your uh, your data so people can get a hold of you. And then uh, yes. just a quick thought. On, go, just a quick thought also, and then we yeah. got to go on. Uh, okay. You know, whether people should be talking to an investment uh, advisor right now if they've not, not done so in the past. Absolutely. Okay, so what I'm doing personally is uh, if you go on Facebook, Tim Ferriss at Upstream Investments, I'm offering folks a 15, 20 minute Zoom conversation. And what I found with the experience is just within 15, 20 minutes, we can find opportunities that either A, they haven't taken advantage of or B, that, that perhaps that they need, really need to look a little bit deeper into. Um, that's a real quick way that people can get some questions answered. Um, and right now, especially usually April is a time where people do take a, um, financial um, situations much more seriously because of our taxes. And that's been deferred till July. But I, I tell people now to take advantage of it, either talk to your tax advisor, which many people have as a result of the PPP program and whatnot, as well as talking to your financial advisor. Because when we see a market decline, as we have, it's important to kind of take a look at your investments and see how you've aligned with with regard to both risk and opportunity. You know, the economy that we're going to enter into is not the same economy that we left at as a result of COVID. Tim, do you have to be a six-figure or seven-figure uh, person to to 
have a financial advisor or if you're, you know, just. Absolutely not. All right. Absolutely All right. Good not. Good to know. Tim um, Ferriss, Group Director, President, Upstream Investment Partners. Tim, we got to scoot. Again, people can find you at Tim Ferriss Upstream on Facebook and they punch that in or and Google and they're going to find you. You got right? it. All yep. right. And here on Orchard Lake Road. All right. Thank you, my friend. Good to talk to you. He is, Absolutely. Thanks, he, he is Tim Ferriss and uh, has had some great advice for us. And, and believe me, he's been living this whole coronavirus thing directly in his household, Tyler. So uh, he's been a really great uh, person to have with us here on the program. You got your, uh, your young guy. You got your uh, IRA stuff and all the financial stuff put together. I, I got to do a little more organizing on that. But uh, it's good <laughs> advice we've gotten from Tim today. That will certainly help. All right. Very good. We're going to take a break in a minute. We're going to check in with uh, West Bloomfield Township Clerk Debbie Binder, who will talk to us a little bit about uh, the census. If you uh, have not done your census paperwork yet, she's going to encourage you to do so. Craig Bryson checks in. He is a senior manager of communications, Road Commission for Oakland County. We're going to talk to Mary Manugian, Michigan State Representative of the 40th District, which covers Birmingham and surrounding areas. And uh, really a double whammy in Birmingham as we talk to Stuart Sherman, owner, founder of Tax Resolve, another financial expert. Can't have too many right now. And uh, Birmingham City Commissioner, we understand. So uh, all that and more coming up. Let's take just a very quick time out, and uh, we'll check in with Debbie Binder in just a moment. This is the Megacast. Hi, I'm Dr. Jonae Caldoun. We know that COVID-19 is spreading rapidly across Michigan right now. The most important thing people can do to protect themselves is social distancing. That means unless you are a critical infrastructure worker or going out to get food or medicine for your home, you should be staying at home. Stay home, stay safe, save lives. Stay home, stay safe, save lives. And look at there, there's Debbie Binder on our Zoom screen. I know, Stuart. And uh, she she is staying home, staying safe and saving lives and again tyler for the second time today um i have uh, not uh, unmuted myself actually we're in the zoom meeting now and larry our zoom producer has me muted and uh, there we go debbie sorry we caught you on tv fixing your hair you look oh, fantastic i'm sorry no 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 it's okay <laughs> you didn't hear me because i you ever do the zoom meeting and you have yourself muted or the moderator has yourself muted and no one can hear you and you're just like talking along it's kind of like you're on on your cell phone and you get disconnected and you just keep talking and talking and talking so um, oh well oh there we are debbie's good fixing her hair you know dave i have to say that's the first time i was caught off guard on zoom so <laughs> it has to happen at some point right? you are doing fantastic uh you are one of the most digitally connected people i know and you know you're always on your phone doing facebook and all the social media debbie binder is the clerk in West Bloomfield Township. Thank you for joining us today. How's everything going in your household? My, my pleasure. Everything's going well. You know what? We're, we're, we're moving along. We're still continuing to function and meet the residents' needs. We're just doing it in new and alternative ways that we're discovering are working out better than we expected. It, it has been a learning process, and we have we, we are going to take away some things as we develop our new normal. Uh, we have learned some things. We have realized there are some things we can do differently than in the past, so there has been some good. And some skills gained in, you know, people, you, you, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but we've proven that you can teach a lot of older dogs new tricks. So I think there's a positive that has come out of it, even though... I would much rather have done it just through professional development, not through these means. <laughs> yes, there has to be an easier, less painful way to uh, to get there. Debbie, a couple of things we wanted to talk to you about today. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let we really want to talk about the census, but let's talk a little bit about what's going on in West Bloomfield Township because it's going to be happening across our entire area. You and the Township Board are meeting today at two o'clock to begin working on yes. plans to open yes. back up Town Hall. Can you talk about what you're working? on we just you know, we have a plan that's been worked on by rob scripture our assessor and amy neary our planning and development services director and they looked at osha guidelines cdc guidelines and all of the guidelines coming out from professional organizations to put a re- re- return to work for you know restore re- continuation of operations for the township looking at how each department's going to bring 
the, the, the new normal back and, and come back to offering our services. So that plan is being submitted to the board for consideration. It's a requirement to bring people back to work is that we have a plan filed. And that's what we'll be discussing at two o'clock this afternoon. Well, you know, it is a, it is a change. We're going to go back and uh, likely we're going to be wearing face masks and, uh, you know, working on different cleaning procedures and, and distances. I, it's, it's actually been interesting to see what uh, some of the, uh, the, the, the folks in the business community that are welcoming people in right now, carry out restaurants and others. A lot of them have gotten very creative with the way they have made this work, and I'm sure we're going to see the same thing when our municipalities open back up. You know, it's funny, I, uh, we picked up the other night from Meza Grill and I guess they had one of their busiest nights ever. So I think that creativity has spawned new businesses, not to say that our businesses aren't hurting because they are. So in any way that we can support them, you know, that during and after will become important to make sure that our businesses continue. So just a, always a good reminder to people to support those local businesses. So I wanted to touch base with you today about uh, about the census. If if this coronavirus thing wasn't going on, that's all we'd be talking about right now. And we would have had a greater opportunity to remind people to get the census paperwork completed. Uh, talk about where we're at and uh, what people need to be looking out for with regard to the census. Right. As we've been speaking about digital advancement and getting into the new generation, it isn't even paperwork anymore. People can fill their census out in less than 10 minutes online. It's nine questions. It's I, the mayor or the supervisor of Orion Township timed himself. He was able to do it in like four and a half minutes to complete his census answers online. You don't need paperwork. You don't need an invitation. You, log, you go to the 2020census.gov, complete your census form. Um, in some of the discussions this week with all of the financial impact of COVID, those census numbers are going to become more important because our state shared revenue will be down. So we can't encourage people enough to participate. And the reason I'm always reaching out to you because you have such a good voice to get the word out is our numbers, they, they rank, SEMCOG has a chart that puts us in ranking. We're right now 69.2% self-response. That means people who have already reached out, whether it's online or by phone or mail to answer their census, they will start coming to door to door later, but 69.2% turnout. Now, why this concerns me is a few weeks ago, if you ranked all the municipalities in Michigan, we were number 104, 105, we dropped to 112, and now we're down to number 123. So we're not going the right direction in terms of getting out that message and getting people filling out their, their census. These numbers are critical. They do affect not only our representation in Congress, but they represent any funding that we get based on a, in a federal level. So from the federal level, they look at what our population is. So these numbers are critical. And it's also demographics that are used to entice businesses and different companies to come to West Will Build and makes us interesting to them. So participation is important. I think there's been hesitation the last few years because of concern about privacy of census data, but that census data is protected for 72 years and it is protected by law. Also important to point out that completing the census is required by law. So I'm urging everybody to get out there and participate and be counted because the more that we get an accurate count, the more benefit it is for the next 10 years. Again, don't get a second shot at this. You get one shot for the next 10 years. So it's imperative that we count everybody in West Bloomfield. One of the least, the most undercounted areas are babies. So anyone who's listening who has a baby, please get out there and make sure that you are also counting the babies in your house. They're looking at a counting date of where people are on April 1st was the date they were looking at. But you could they actually extended the census deadline now until October 31st, plenty of time to respond. And another big bonus is that if you respond digitally online or a mailing in a form or by phone, you will not get someone coming to your door. So well, I really urge you to get out there and respond. And, and that just helps all the way around. La last thing we want to do is be spending more money, uh, you know, more of our government money, which we have in, we really need every penny of it right now in this, this current time and age, uh, having people go knocking on doors uh, in this advanced 
digitally technical advanced uh, period of our lives. We just don't need to do it. So do the right thing. It's the law. You're right. I kind of like what you said, Debbie Binder, Clerk West Bloomfield, about uh, that informa- for information not being shared after you fill it out on your census form. If you haven't done so, you do it today. No, no one else is going to get it for 72 years. Speaking from my own personal perspective, 72 years. I'm okay with that. So <laughs> I think I think it's going to be fine. Someone wants to look up my information 72 years from now, it's, it's okay. But you and uh, and the clerks and all of our other municipalities and, and you know, everyone, and it, regardless of whether you're in West Bloomfield or not, you want your community to be well represented so they don't lose, you don't lose, funding yes. for your specific community. It's really important. And that, that slight, you know, when I see those, that pres- us going down in the ranking in the state, I definitely want to urge people to get out there and, and participate. I'd like to see, you know, last time we had 77% participation rate. I'd like to see us beat that. And we now, with the extension, we have the time to really make it happen. So it's all about spreading the word, letting people know it's safe and encouraging others to get pe- you know, people they know, you know, kind of making it a, a, a person to person suggestion and getting people they know to, to participate and get involved it where it's important to me personally that it that we get a good count in west bloomfield but this is a nationwide issue that anybody who shares with somebody that's living in the united states will benefit their community so i encourage everyone to start spreading the word okay so if you didn't find the paperwork in your mailbox and you've not responded or you didn't get it for some reason uh debbie binder west bloomfield township clerk where do you go to fill out your census information 2020 census.gov it's that easy there's a section on the top of that page that says respond you go there it talks it walks you through it it'll take minutes to to complete it so very easy handled at the national level 2020 census.gov all right anything else uh that uh that we should be hearing from from you today anything else that you think people need to know about I do. I do have one more thing okay. if I can bring up while, while I have your ear and, and hopefully many ears. Um, we have a, ge- a primary election coming up on August 4th and a general election coming up on November 3rd. We want to remind people that they now have the option for no reason absentee voting. And with everything going on this year, I would encourage people to consider voting F by absentee ballot this year. Um, all they need to do is get in touch with the clerk's office at either 248 248- Four five one four eight four eight. Again, it's two four eight four five one four eight four eight, or send an email to um, absent voters, av voters at wbtownship.org, or keep it simple and just send it to dbinder at wbtownship.org. We'll get an absentee ballot. Um, we'll get you set up for absentee ballots. I won't yeah. go into the permanent AV list now, but I just would encourage with everything going on right now, this might be a good year to consider that new right from 2018 to vote absentee with no reason. And, and if you live in Kegel Harbor or you live in Pontiac or you live in Troy, because we've yes. expanded the mega cast yes. across most of Oakland County, uh, it's just going to be the same thing for other municipalities. They can get a hold of their local clerk, probably Correct. go to their local municipality website. I'm sure there's information there. And, and it is really convenient to vote absentee now. It's, uh, you know, who knows what the weather's going to be like in, in an election day. And, and uh, this is a very important uh, a series of elections we have coming up that will have you huge, know, they, huge they impact. Can, they can go. There's a um, Michigan mm-hmm. Voter Information Center, a statewide website through the Department of State. And they, if they put in their name and address, they'll be able to get all of their voting information, including the contact information for their local clerks. So just Google Michigan Voter Information Center. It'll come right up and go there, enter your name, address, and it will give you all the information, what congressional districts you're in, what everything, and access to your local clerk. Excellent idea. See Tyler Keefe over there. He's gonna he's gonna put that on our website, right? Tyler, gonna get that up there. Right. People can. Excellent. Good. Sure. Debbie, I always follow the you know the clerk's Facebook page is a great source of information because I try to keep all of those links and sites going up routinely on the West Bloomfield Clerk's Office Facebook page. All right. Hey, Debbie, um, how about these uh, these hospital workers and first responders? You know, it's just it's been so amazing. We had no idea 
uh, you know, a couple of months ago, this is going to hit to the degree that it has. And, you know, these people, uh, regardless of West Bloomfield Hospital, St. Joe, whatever hospital is near you, um, you know, Beaumont, uh, these people are these, they're just as heroic, you know, what they're doing. I think that we, you know, one, one of the greatest memes I've seen on Facebook is a group of superheroes saluting the hospital workers as they're walking through the, the greetings tunnel. And I think every one of us owes that acknowledgement to what heroes that those healthcare workers have been during this time and continue to be. I don't even want to say have been, they are continue to be because I'll think, although things are looking a little bit more calm right now, there still are increase, you know, there still are new cases and people who rely heavily on those healthcare workers who have been there for all of us and people working in those essential businesses that have been there the entire time. So I think we have a lot to be grateful for for ourselves, but a lot to be thankful for in terms of the people in our community that have helped keep it running. Okay, have a great Zoom meeting at 2 o'clock. Good luck getting things open there. We'll Thanks. be watching your community and uh, all the other communities around our Oakland County service areas. The the door is open back up. She is Debbie Binder, the clerk Thanks, Dave. in West Bloomfield. Thanks, Debbie. Good to talk with you today. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. The roads in the middle of all this road construction. It's springtime in Oakland County, and that means, Tyler Keefe, the the roads there's barrels have you seen the barrels are all over the place i haven't seen too many uh but i haven't been you, in a lot of traffic heavy areas just yet yeah a little easier with the traffic not being so bad but there is a lot of construction um in the works and there'll be more and more we're going to find out uh, how that's going we'll talk to the senior manager of communications road commission for oakland county craig bryson make sure his people are uh, safe and well and find out what's going on we're going to talk more about uh, the financial side of all that's going on when we check in with an attack with a tax attorney and uh, adjunct professor Stuart sherman will be joining us he is the owner and founder of tax resolve and we'll talk um, all these issues that we keep talking financially the impact of everything on you your personal life and your business life and then later on in the show we check in with uh, state representative mary manugian uh, of the 40th district she's a democrat uh, the republicans have really are really at odds with the governor we'll see how all this is shaping out when we talk to her later on in the broadcast and we wrap up the broadcast just by checking in and uh, a household right here in our community uh, one of the great families and uh, a couple of incredible musicians byron and michelle Kinsamo will check in from their home we were going to do a little concert from their house but uh, we're going to save that for next week when we get a couple of things patched in. Um, but we're going to talk to them. One of their daughters um, was uh, had a test. I want to see uh, what's going on with that. And, uh, you know, just see what it's like on the front line with your typical Oakland County family going through the whole thing. Um, we'll talk roads in a minute. This is the Megacast. I'm Dave Scott. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Kurt Lawson, and I'm the Public Information Officer for West Bloomfield Township. We wanted to reach out to you, our older adults, to provide information that you may find useful during this difficult time. We want to ensure you that West Bloomfield Town Hall, our Waters and Utility Department, West Bloomfield Parks, and our Police and Fire Departments continue to work hard on your behalf. Information and resources can be found on the Township website, the Police Facebook and Twitter, or call West Bloomfield Parks COVID-19 Help Hotline. Please remember to keep your social distance of at least six feet, wear facial coverings when you leave your home, and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap. These precautions will help keep you safe during these difficult times. I am Dr. Faust, the Medical Director for the Oakland County Health Division. The most important thing you can do to prevent the spread of illness is to wash your hands thoroughly and often. Follow these six easy steps every time you wash your hands. Step one, turn on the sink and wet your hands with warm water. Step two, apply soap to your hands and lather between your fingers, under your nails, and the front and back of your hands and wrists. Step three, wash your hands by scrubbing them together for at least 20 seconds. Step four, rinse your hands with warm, clean water. And step five, dry your hands with a clean cloth towel, a paper towel, or hot air blow dryer. If you're using a cloth towel, make sure to change it often. For handheld faucets, turn off the water using a paper towel instead of your bare hand. Step six, if you're using a paper towel, throw it away. Practice healthy habits 
like washing your hands after coughing or sneezing into them to keep you and others healthy. Go to oakgov.com health or call Nurse on Call at 1-800-848-5533 to learn more. And welcome back to the MegaCast. Dave Scott, Tyler Keith in our Lakes FM studios in West Bloomfield. We thank you for joining us um, throughout Oakland County now on the MegaCast. Um, thank you very much to Civic Center TV, Channel 15 in West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and Orchard Lake. And you can watch us there. You can also watch us now in Birmingham area. Municipal Access also on Channel 15 on Comcast. If you go to at t Cable, you can find us on Channel 99. Go to one of our communities that we are serving. Um, just go to the West Bloomfield link and you'll find our video there. We want to thank today the West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. They uh, have uh, offered up their Facebook Live channel today and we are there. And then how about these great radio stations? 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, West Bloomfield, Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, 88.1 WBFH, Bloomfield Hills, Birmingham, and uh, all the way back up through many of those northern uh, communities. They're there as well. And WAHS, Auburn Hills, that is 89.5 Avondale Community Radio, and uh, the most powerful of all of our FM stations covering a huge chunk of Oakland and uh, Macomb County. We thank all of our uh, participants for helping us spread the word during these very challenging times. So let's uh, shift away from coronavirus for just a couple of minutes and talk roads because uh, the barrels are out, everybody, there from his office at the Road Commission for Oakland County. It's Craig Bryson. Hey, Craig, how you doing? Good, Dave. How are you? Good. You must be an essential worker, my friend, because I see you there at work, working hard and keeping the roads in good shape. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let's just talk about just a couple of projects, and then I'm sure we have other things to get to. A, um, downtown Birmingham. I don't know if that's your project or not, but uh, it, it's a, it is a Birmingham project. <laughs> right. And, and uh, Maple is closed right through downtown Birmingham. Or there, it, 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 Certainly the travel through there has been slowed. I've not driven it in the last day or two, but uh, you got Maple there. And then you've got Maple Road. Um, in the West Bloomfield area that is impacted by construction. That one I know you can talk about. Right. That's the Maple Middle Belt Roundabout. Um, as you probably know, we, we constructed most of that last year. We opened it up uh, at the end of the season last year, knowing that we had some work left to do this year, that we'd have to close it again this year. So uh, on April 27th, we did close it down again, and we're in there um, – doing the, the finishing work, which will take us probably into uh, June to finish that up. And during that time, Maple Road East and West remains closed. Middle Belt North and South remains open. Uh, but we've got some uh, curb work to do there, the concrete work in the, in the center island, uh, some behind the curb landscaping. We're putting up the uh, Hawk pedestrian crosswalk signals there. So it's a variety of work that needs to take place there that we're, we're getting done now. All right, and about uh, how long will it be until uh, until that's completed in that area? We're expecting till sometime in June, till it's, till it's open, uh, weather oh, that's permitting. Pretty that's pretty quick. Um, are you working on uh, the same quantity of projects that you normally would be working on, um, or has the coronavirus, uh, is it uh, COVID nineteen slowed you down on projects? Well, we're we're pretty much where we would normally be. Last year was uh, just a record year, so we're not doing quite as much work as we did last year, but that, that was unrelated to the coronavirus. That was more of a funding um, issue. But at the moment, um, our major construction projects are going. We have kind of hit the pause button on several upcoming projects that may or may not go this year, depending on funding. Um, right now, really, it's more the funding ramifications of the coronavirus than the um, than the virus itself. Um, as you know, uh, gas taxes are our second largest source of funding and people are driving a whole lot less right now. Um, our gas tax revenue for March was down about uh, 10%. We think that's going to be probably double that for April and maybe even more for May. Um, so the, the full budget ramifications of all that uh, remain to be seen. Craig Bryson of the Road Commission for Oakland County. Does that impact you right away, Craig, or do you have like accrued dollars so these budget reductions would impact work down the road, or does it have immediate impact? 
Yeah, it's not immediate yet. It, it could be by the end of the summer, frankly, if, uh, if these projections hold. Um, we could be stopping work, reducing work, um, or worse, if, you know, depending on how bad the, the budget gets. I mean, there are projections that the traffic is at 50% of normal levels right now. If that remains for a while, and it looks like probably will at least for a couple more weeks, um, it could begin to get serious. Uh, hopefully more people begin to go back to work by the end of May and, and we'll get back to normal gas tax revenues. But, but again, that remains to be seen. It, isn't it really, it's, it's crazy ironic that, that, you know, the biggest thing that, uh, that this governor and all of us wanted to do was fix the damn roads. Right. And that's Absolutely. all we've been hearing about it now, you know, our ability to do that. We, we're really severely handcuffed on that. Oh, absolutely. You know, a little little international pandemic comes along and that uh, throws a monkey wrench in everything. So um, all that stuff that's going on in I-75 over in the Troy area, is that uh, anything that you're involved in as well? No, that's that's MDOT's uh, project. And uh, as you know, they're they're moving ahead full speed with that. Yeah, it seems to be moving along. You know, I was thinking it might be easier for all the the men and women who are out working on the roads with fewer of us driving around, is it easier to get the work done? It is, and, and that's certainly a benefit. Um, you know, all, all of our crews that are out patching potholes or um, doing other essential work along the roads appreciate the fact that there is a lot less traffic. And, um, you know, that's certainly a safety benefit for them. It makes it easier to do the work, you know, and, and easier to close roads or lanes when we need to. Um, but we do continue to remind people that there are still people out working on the road. You still need to be careful when there's uh, workers present. Any other, because we now have a little bit more global uh, coverage here across much of Oakland County, any other projects that, uh, that are on your desk that you might, or that are coming that you might want to let people know about? Well, I think most people in the, in the Orient area are familiar with our Baldwin Road project. It's a $50 million reconstruction and widening project of Baldwin Road, essentially from I-75 up to Walden. And we're working on the northern uh, mile of that this year, uh, wrapping up uh, what's turned out to be um, a three-year project. Um, we've got Maybe and Walden Roads both closed at Baldwin currently to work on those intersections. Um, that's underway. We've got a number of, uh, of other big projects coming in Berkeley, for example. We're going to be resurfacing uh, 12 mile through downtown Berkeley. Uh, we'll be doing a section of 12 mile from Losser to Telegraph in Southfield. Um, a lot of a lot of work coming this year. You know, it's not your fault. I almost hate to bring it up because we, you know, we're friends, right? But you know, what a double whammy for the people in Berkeley. You know, they they finally get their stores back open, and then we're going to have to do the road construction. You know, it's just you can't plan these things out. It's no one's fault. It just no, it's, no, it, it's just unfortunate, not. though, isn't it? It absolutely is, and you know, in an ideal world, that would certainly be not how it happened, but. Um, but unfortunately, we need to get that job done this year because next year there's going to be other parallel projects and we can't have, you know, multiple mile roads uh, impacted at the same time if we can help it. So it is unfortunate. We, we feel for those, uh, you know, the businesses and the residents, but, you know, the, the residents are inconvenienced. The businesses, of course, it's it's um, a real economic challenge. And we really do feel for all of those people that are that are suffering through this. Craig Bryson, uh, Oakland County Road Commission for Oakland County. Let me get that right. Uh, we've talked about it before, but uh, for folks that might be tuning in today that have not heard us have a chance to have this conversation, uh, can you talk just briefly before we go about the roundabouts? We see more and more roundabouts. You talked about the one at Maple and, and Middlebaugh, but they're popping up in virtually every community. Uh, we see a ton of them in Oakland County. Uh, can you talk a little bit about why those are popping up so much and, and uh, the uh, opportunities or challenges that they present? Absolutely. And that the Maple Middle Belt, by the way, is our 28th roundabout in uh, on road commission roads in Oakland County. That's the highest concentration in the state. Uh, we love them for two, two reasons. Um, number one, they move a lot more traffic than a signalized intersection will. Um, engineers estimates are anywhere from 30 to 50 percent more traffic through an intersection and often in the same footprint, so without any additional land. Uh, so they're in, in that sense, from a traffic flow and mobility point of view, they're a real great bang for the buck. Secondly, and, and probably more important really, is the safety benefit. Um, roundabouts save lives. Um, the, the data is overwhelming. The, 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 the reduction in traffic fatalities at intersections when roundabouts are put in to replace signals is, is unparalleled. 
Um, numerous studies at the federal uh, highway level and the, in the private sector have shown that they reduce traffic fatalities at intersections by about 90%. Um, and as I've said before, there really is virtually nothing else we can do that will reduce fatalities by 90%. Um, so it's a real it's a real win-win. Moves more traffic more efficiently and reduces people getting killed at, at intersections in urbanized areas. And that's yeah, that's critical. Well, and I get that, and we've talked about it before, and I, people are, are listening to you say that, and they go, are you, Craig, come on, are you kidding me? Uh, fewer accidents, these are confusing for a lot of people. And people don't like necessarily at first driving through them until they get used to them, but as you explained to me many times before, uh, when you have a conventional intersection, you get a lot more um, high-speed T-bone type accidents, and in the accidents are very different in the roundabout, and they're, they they don't have they're they're usually not as severe. Is that correct? Absolutely. So at a signalized intersection, people die in two ways. You have either head-on collisions or broadside collisions, as you mentioned, the T-bone collisions. That's where we see the fatalities at intersections, especially in urbanized areas. Um, with a roundabout, you're almost physically eliminating the possibility of either of those kinds of, of accidents. You have to go over the center island to have a head-on collision. We've not seen that in Oakland County very often. Um, uh, and their broadside in, uh, collisions don't happen. What you do see is slight increase sometimes in the side swipes or slow speed rear end collisions. Um, those are almost always property damage accidents. In other words, just the car is damaged, the people are not injured. Uh, while we certainly don't want to see you know, any kind of accidents, property damage or human damage, if we have to choose between the two, we'll take a, uh, a fender bender over a fatality any day of the week. All right, Craig Bryson, thank you very much for joining us. Anything else you want to add before we uh, say so long today? Uh, not other than to, to thank all our crews who are out there continuing to work, you know, practice, practicing the uh, social distancing and safety procedures, but they're out there doing uh, the usual fantastic job, keeping the roads safe and open for everybody out there. And, and we appreciate that as well as, of course, all the other essential workers that are out there um, keeping us going. All right, Craig. Well, thank you for saying that, and we echo your thanks. And, uh, and listen, we know we'll probably have another conversation in a couple of months because we know we have tough budget days ahead of us. So uh, best of luck navigating those waters, and thank you for all you do. Good to talk to you today. Thank you, and thanks for all the work that you guys do. You're doing a great job of sharing information, and we, we really appreciate that. Thanks, Craig. Very kind of you. Craig Bryson, Road Commission for Oakland County. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a couple of moments when we return. We're going to get back into the money pot and talk about the financial implications uh, on your business and your personal life uh, from this coronavirus crisis. Uh, these are issues that impact you each and every day. We'll talk to Stuart Sherman in a couple of moments, the owner and founder of Tax Resolve and uh, State Representative Mari Minugi, and will be joining us as well. It's uh, been, uh, been very complicated in Lansing, to say the least, uh, especially lately. We'll get an update in a couple of minutes. This is the Megacast, Dave Scott, Tyler Keith, six feet away over on the other side of the studio. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Kurt Lawson, and I'm the Public Information Officer for West Bloomfield Township. We wanted to reach out to you, our older adults, to provide information that you may find useful during this difficult time. We want to ensure you that West Bloomfield Town Hall, our Waters and Utility Department, West Bloomfield Parks, and our Police and Fire Departments continue to work hard on your behalf. Information and resources can be found on the Township website, the Police Facebook and Twitter, or call West Bloomfield Parks COVID-19 Help Hotline. Please remember to keep your social distance of at least six feet, wear facial coverings when you leave your home, and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap. These precautions will help keep you safe during these difficult times. Hello, I'm Dr. Betty Chu, Chief Quality Officer at Henry Ford Health System, and I'm with Wright Lassiter, Henry Ford Health System's CEO, to talk about coronavirus. In uncertain times, it's natural to have questions. So I'm going to ask Dr. Chu to answer some of the common ones. First, why can't I visit my grandma to see if she's okay? Because the elderly are at a higher risk for complications with this disease, and you could inadvertently infect her. If I'm healthy, why can't I go out with my friends? The larger the crowd you're exposed to, the higher the chance you could get infected and infect others. If I have symptoms, 
Why do I have to seek care? While the disease isn't dangerous for most people, for others, it can be. We need to understand how serious your case is, because the right choices save lives. For more information, visit henryford.com or call 313-874-1055. Hello, I'm Dr. Faust, Medical Director for the Oakland County Health Division. Coronavirus Disease 2019, or COVID-19, is a new disease caused by a new respiratory virus named SARS-CoV-2. COVID-19 was first identified in December 2019. There is currently no vaccine to prevent coronavirus disease 2019. The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to this virus. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after going to the bathroom, before eating, and after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces using a regular household cleaning spray or wipe. Avoid close contact with people who are sick and avoid touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash. Finally, stay home when you're sick. For more information about coronavirus disease 2019, go to oakgov.com slash health or call 1-800-848-5533. And welcome back to the Megacast. My name is Dave Scott, Tyler Keefe in our Lakes FM studios. We thank you very much for joining us. The Megacast is not uh, not a radio broadcast, not a television broadcast. Tyler, it's not really even a podcast. No. That seems no. to be the popular thing it's to not. do these days. No, not a podcast. No. The Megacast is all of the above and more. We are on Facebook Live today. Thanks to the West Bloomfield Chamber. We're in a different Facebook channel Every day we are on TV in Birmingham, Birmingham Area Municipal Access in uh, Birmingham, Bloom, uh, Bingham Farms, Beverly Hills and Franklin. We are also on Civic Center TV in West Bloomfield, Orchard Lake, Eagle Harbor and Sylvan Lake. You can find us on uh, both of those municipal television outlets, websites and uh, civiccentertv.com, our flagship website with all the information about the coronavirus, the show, clips that you uh, you uh, We'll be able to watch of segments that we've had on our program. And uh, then, of course, not one, not two, but three great radio stations. 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 WBFH, the Biff in, in Bloomfield Hills uh, and the region, and WAHS 89.5 Avondale Community Radio. So uh, that's what this thing is all about. We're doing our best to get you um, the most current and up to date and uh, very local information on what's going on during this crisis. So we are delighted now to meet and uh, be joined via Zoom by Stuart Sherman. So uh, Stuart is a tax attorney and adjunct professor. He's a founder and owner of Tax Resolve. And uh, Mr. Sherman, uh, my notes say, and I am told that you are also the former mayor of Birmingham. So, uh, very good to have you with us via Zoom. Thanks for joining the MegaCast. Well, thanks for letting me be here. Well, it's good to have you here. So, uh, let's start with uh, with tax issues. Well, it, it's it is a complicated time right now. I I thought I had my business fairly well organized, and and trying to deal with all the forecasting and and really an amazing number of programs to help us out it's a it's a little bit complicated what are your thoughts well it definitely is a little more difficult this year uh with the changes in deadlines and the difficulty in reaching people uh with uh, most people not working out of their homes uh, it's definitely added some levels of complexity that have not existed in the past so we do appreciate all the things, though. I mean, we the at the very least, the most conspicuous is uh, is not having to file our taxes until what July is that correct? July fifteenth. Yeah. Uh, but not only do they extend the due date for the tax returns, they also extended the due date for the payments. So if you would have made a payment on April fifteenth, you can now make that payment on July fifteenth without penalty. Um, so that that's a huge benefit to to everyone as we try to work our way through this and and then the irs is also managing uh these payments that are going out to a lot of individuals uh getting checks uh, some are getting 1200 some are getting 2400 or a little bit more and uh those have been going out and uh and that's also a big help and that i assume that program is managed by the irs it is yeah the irs is sending those checks out um 
uh, as I understand it, checks are starting to go out, the actual physical checks for people who did not have direct deposit information on file, uh, the physical checks are starting to go out today. Excellent. That's what I saw, too. And I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that because we've not mentioned that on the show. And that's going to be good news for people that were were frustrated because they didn't get a check electronically. And now they're going to be getting one in the mail. And, and so uh, I <laughs> I assume if, if you haven't ventured out of your house to check your mail, you might want to go do that today and tomorrow. Right. Go out and clean up the exactly. mailbox. Exactly. Sometimes you get exactly a lot of ads right. out in the mailbox. It gets kind of frustrating cleaning all that out of there. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I would also suggest to, to uh, anyone, with, as long as you have the Internet connection, uh, they can go to the, to the IRS website, irs.gov, and on the main page is a link to the coronavirus uh, uh, economic benefit checks that are going out. Um, follow that link, and they can find out exactly the status of their particular payment. For business owners, Stuart Sherman, uh, tax attorney, uh, it gets a little complicated. But again, more things that business owners can take advantage of. you got to be careful, um, but you can take advantage of. And one of the big ones, I think, is uh, not having to pay your 941s. And those are withholding taxes that it, it can accrue to a lot of money. And if I got this right, the IRS says you don't have to pay those right away. But be careful, right? Uh, absolutely. You want to make sure that you do pay them by the due date uh, that has been extended. And if I recall correctly, that due date is the end of the year now. Uh, if you don't pay them by that time period, there is personal liability to the business holder for the, the amount of the taxes that are actually withheld from the employee's paychecks. And that's where I see small businesses getting into trouble. They use that money to keep themselves afloat and then they don't have the funds to pay the taxes when they're due. Yeah, and, and if there is one tax, and I could speak, unfortunately, some level of experience with this, if there is one tax that you, you definitely want to pay and pay on time, uh, business owners, it, it's your 941s because um, the IRS doesn't have a lot of patience with those because they see that as money that you should have been, uh, you know, you, you've taken out of paychecks of your employees. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's called a trust fund tax, and there is personal liability, and they will chase you for that. Uh, plus, it's non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. So you're going to end up paying that money. Stuart Sherman, you know, here's where it gets really confusing. There are a lot of other, so that's all the basic things that I've been able to figure out as a business owner. Um, okay. but, but then it gets a lot more complicated. There are a lot of other things in the CARES Act that I just can't even make any sense out of that impact, you know, taxes from my last couple of years to the business and adjustments and things we can move around that are very helpful to businesses. Uh, is that making any sense? You, can't, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, I do. I do. Um, for a lot of business holders, or business holders, business owners, we are needing to go back through their previous year's returns to see if we can uh, amend them to take advantage of losses. Um, the uh, how what do we call the the uh, Trump Tax Act um, changed the way losses were were dealt with. Instead of being able to carry them back, you could only carry them forward. CARES allowed these some of these losses to be carried back again. So for some business holder business owners, it did make sense and it still makes sense for them to look to see if they can take advantage of that to recover taxes that they paid over the last couple of years. Bottom line, if you figure out how to do all that, I know we're getting deep in the weeds here, but, but if you figure out how to do all that, it may put some money in your pocket early next year, whenever you get your tax return, right? It's, it's a program exactly. that's there to help you get some cash that you might not have been able to get in the form of a bigger return from the IRS. Exactly. Well, actually, these things can be done now. Uh, amended returns can be filed immediately to recover that money now. So we can get money into business owners' pockets immediately rather than waiting. However, the IRS is not processing paper returns right now. So that does create a little bit of a snafu from the standpoint of getting it done quickly. All right, and that would be a paperwork action. It wouldn't be something you could do electronically? Exactly. All right. So, and you know, I don't, this is something I haven't heard reported anywhere in the media. So I'm really glad uh, for our business owners that are, that are listening, go talk to your tax expert. Um, if it's Stuart 
you can wait five minutes because we're talking to him right now. But call him later on today and, and then go talk to him and ask him about it and see. Because, you know, any way you can get a little bit of extra money, a little bit of extra cash might save your business. On the PPP loan program, uh, Stuart Sherman, we're hearing that uh, that the community banks in particular have been doing a really nice job lately moving some of these loans through. I don't know if, what you're hearing from your clients. Um, I'm hearing very little. Uh, I have a number of clients who have applied for PPP loans. Uh, I only have one who's actually gotten it through. Everyone else is still waiting. Uh, but now that the additional funds have been uh, added to the program, we're hoping that uh, more of my clients will be start will be hearing about uh, approvals of those loans. What are you talking to uh, individuals about? We talked about businesses. Um, what are you talking to individuals about things that people that – People should be working at, and they're stuck at home right now. Maybe they've got a little time. Uh, as you're looping back and looking at things financially, uh, what what rises to the top of the stack of things that people should be paying attention to? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, one, one of the issues that I'm seeing with uh, individuals right now, and I'm getting a lot of phone calls, are people who are behind on their filings. Uh, so maybe they haven't filed their returns in two, three, five, seven years. And I, I'm telling them this is a perfect opportunity to get your affairs in order, to go through your financial records, gather your information, uh, get the returns prepared, and get them ready to go in or get them filed. Uh, we can then deal with the IRS arranging uh, your payment situation, whether it's uh, paying off what's on the return or working out uh, some type of payment ag agreement, or in the alternative, an offer and compromise. It just depends on the individual. But the biggest thing that I have to tell people as they're going through this, I'll hear repeatedly, oh, I didn't file my return for say seven years, and I'm, but I, I had refunds coming, so I'm gonna get all this money. Well, no, you're not. Because if you don't file your return and you don't claim that refund for three years, you've lost that refund. Uh, you can't go back and get it. But the IRS can still collect it from you if you owe them. So I strongly encourage people to use this time to get their, their finances in order. All right. Well, really, it's good advice at any time, but it particularly good advice right now. Let's shift over. Just talk about Birmingham. You know, I, I drive through Birmingham multiple times a day and um, I, right now and there's a, a big project going on on Maple Road. I know. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Absolutely. Um, we are involved in replacing the infrastructure along Maple Road, water, sewer, street, sidewalks, parking, everything, trees. Um, uh, it is in conjunction with uh, MDOT because we received a federal grant for part of the project. Um, we were waiting for MDOT to actually award the contract, which they have done. Uh, and as of Monday, we've started construction. How is downtown Birmingham doing? I mean, coronavirus aside, we'll come back and talk about that. I mean, just in general, it seems like Birmingham is really doing great. People want to get downtown. They want to walk around. They want to shop. We're seeing, you know, a lot of great new establishments, and, and not the least of which is the construction of a brand-new major hotel right now in downtown Birmingham. Absolutely. Uh, and, and thank you for, for coming and enjoying our, our streets and our restaurants and our stores. Uh, Birmingham is doing well. Uh, this obviously this coronavirus situation has closed the city down at the downtown down. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things that will uh, hopefully recur once we are able to reopen. Uh, we are taking steps to plan for that reopening to encourage people to come back into the downtown to frequent the stores and hopefully the restaurant soon. Um, and we look forward to the, the new hotel and other projects that will be opening up in the very near future. Yeah, I mean, when I think of downtown Birmingham, it, certainly we think of, of the wonderful retail that's there. Um, but you, you, downtown Birmingham is a very um, interesting collection of restaurants and a, a wide variety of restaurants and places to go after work for a cocktail. So it's a real fun place, a lot of different things to do, um, some great movie theaters, and everyone knows I don't need to sit here and sing the praises of downtown Birmingham to people in Oakland County, but... Uh, you know, Please you just, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate we're in the situation right now, but it will be back. How about the, uh, how about the city itself?
itself or, you know, where West Bloomfield's going to talk today about getting the city offices back open. I assume there are plans right now to get things back in business as soon as uh, we can do that, as soon as humanly possible. We are absolutely working on that uh, as soon as we're given the go ahead and it's safe for the health of health and safety of not only our residents and our, uh, our employees, uh, our visitors, uh, we want everyone to have an enjoyable, safe, and healthy experience uh, when they're downtown and in the city. Um, it's we take great pride in that, and and we look forward to welcoming everyone back. Well, Stuart, thank you very much for joining us. Stuart Sherman, owner and founder of Tax Resolve in Birmingham. Appreciate your tax advice. He's a tax attorney and also the former mayor of Birmingham and uh, currently a city commissioner. Good to have you with us. Anything else you want to share with the people before we say so long? Uh, just uh, I thank you for letting me uh, taking some time here and uh, just wish everyone well and uh, stay healthy. Thank you, sir. Same to you, and uh, say hello to everyone in Birmingham today. He is the uh, he is the founder of Tax Resolve in Birmingham and a Birmingham City Commissioner, former Mayor Stuart Sherman, joining us here on the MegaCast. Speaking of Birmingham, a lot of Birmingham today, Tyler. Yeah. We yeah. are going to talk to Mari Manugian, the uh, representative, state representative of the 40th district that serves Birmingham and the surrounding communities. We'll check in with her in a couple of moments. And then we're going to go back over to West Bloomfield and talk to a couple of friends of mine. They are just your typical family who's been camped out at home for this whole thing, doing everything right, and uh, and we're just going to see how they're doing. Now, they also happen to be extremely talented musicians, and they'll be putting on a Facebook concert later on today, and it's all a big benefit, so we'll find out more about that as well. This is the mega cast across uh, much of Oakland County. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm Dr. Jonay Caldoun. We know that COVID-19 is spreading rapidly across Michigan right now. The most important thing people can do to protect themselves is social distancing. That means unless you are a critical infrastructure worker or going out to get food or medicine for your home, you should be staying at home. Stay home, stay safe, save lives. Stay home, stay safe, and uh, and save lives. You know, you can't say it enough. Tyler, we we can't remind people enough to make sure they're doing everything they need to do to uh, keep themselves safe and healthy during this entire crisis. And that means washing your hands, social distancing, folks that are in, you know, going into the grocery store or if you're going into uh, maybe a carryout place to get some food or you're picking up some curbside retail, Get out your uh, face mask and uh, and make sure you're doing all the all the things you need to do. What kind, What's your face mask of choice? I have a couple. I, I've been using the bandana that we used in the studio a couple uh-huh. of days ago. I've been taking that and just uh, I use a couple of rubber bands and I can turn that into a makeshift face mask. Works really well. It's nice and uh, nice and thick so that it uh, keeps everything out and keeps me from uh, bringing things out as well. And uh, that's been that's been great. I've used that. I got it a couple other. Uh, cloths that I'll also use for masks as well. Well, uh, and it's been, I've noticed your face masks have been very stylish. For me, right. it's been the all basic red bandana. Uh, you know, I look like a, 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 a gangster from the 18 whatever going into some saloon in some, you know, uh, town out west, you know, <laughs> to hold them up with my with my face mask okay. on, but oh well. Hey, we're keeping uh, State Representative Mari Manugi in waiting with all of our nonsense, so let's say hello to her. She is the State Representative of the 40th District, which covers Birmingham and surrounding communities. Mari, welcome back to the Megacast. Thanks for having me. Good to have you with us again. Uh, you know, needless to say, it's uh, been a little crazy in that town up there that you hang out in in Lansing the last couple of days. And I said it many times. I said untangling all this is going to be harder than than it was when we first started reacting. No question about it. Uh, just to share very quickly with our audience the news, the governor extended the stay-at-home order for 28 days. has been working on releasing other things. Uh, the legislature primarily uh, led by the Republicans has said, hey, hang on a minute. We want to we want to play a part and then it kind of bubbled over yesterday a little bit uh do i have that right and you want to update folks on what's been going on in lansing 
Yeah, so um, I can understand that it's been a little bit confusing um, because things change rather quickly um, and things that are happening in the legislature and then things happening in the executive um, branch um, aren't uh, really quite matching up right now. And so um, just to give kind of a recap, um, essentially yesterday I voted on um, a few pieces of legislation um, two of which dealt specifically with executive orders, uh, some of which um, attempted to codify some of the executive orders that were put in place. Um, however, uh, I'm, I voted against it. Frankly, um, first of all, I never saw the bill that was negotiated in the first place. So um, I tend to not like to vote um, yes for something that I haven't read before. Um, but more importantly, um, from my understanding of, of all of that, um, it doesn't really make much sense to me to codify a temporary executive order into law. Um, that doesn't make any sense because we'll have to go back in and repeal the law within a certain very short period of time, whereas an executive order with the stroke of a pen can be undone. Um, it's a much faster way to deal with a crisis. Um, and frankly, I mean, Speaker Chatfield from the beginning of the coronavirus uh, outbreak here in Michigan has said that the governor, uh, Governor Whitmer, is best positioned to handle uh, this crisis and so um, was a little bit confused as to why we were doing what we were doing yesterday. So you were in you were in Lansing yesterday, I presume you weren't doing this virtually, you were there. And here's yeah. what we saw on television, uh, Representative Manugian. We we saw in the gallery a lot of folks there um, protesting, getting loud, and even even some of them with uh, with firearms. Can you talk? Is that really what was going on? And, and can you can you share your experiences from yesterday? Yeah, uh, absolutely. No problem. Um, so uh, the gallery you're referencing is the Senate gallery um, in the House of Representatives. There's 110 of us that serve. Um, unfortunately, now 109, given uh, Representative Isaac Robinson's passing uh, due to coronavirus. Um, and so the 109 of us um, were assigned uh, seats uh, either to sit at our assigned desks that we normally sit at uh, when times are uh, not during a global pandemic, or um, there were also seats where different representatives were positioned throughout the gallery so we could maintain social distancing. Um, and so in the House of Representatives, uh, the gallery was not open to the public because that's where representatives were sitting. However, on the Senate side, since there's only 38 of them that serve, uh, they were all sitting at their desks. Uh, they were able to be further apart from one another. And so uh, the gallery uh, throughout part of the day um, during session ended up being open to visitors. Um, that was originally not part of the plan. Um, and then things uh, changed. So um, I will say this, there was probably about, I would say anywhere between 250 to 350 um, very loud armed protesters outside of the Capitol. Um, I will say this, like, we have a very rich history of hunting and sportsmanship and um, sportsman uh, activities in Michigan. I'm like not um, opposed to any of that at all. Um, it's something that is really important to the culture of our state. Um, but to see that happening at the Capitol um, was, you know, even more to me, um, I'll be honest with you, was more concerning for me personally. Um, I was more concerned for my physical safety than I am on open carry day. Uh, which is typically the day that uh, folks rally um, in favor of uh, their Second Amendment rights uh, by which they interpret the Second Amendment. State Representative Mari Manugian joining us. She is our uh, state representative from the 40th District serving Birmingham and, and other area communities. And uh, thank you for sharing all that. I just what we saw on TV, I mean, I, I, it was scary just watching it. Forget your opinion on, you know, where one side is and where the other side is. It is. Yep. It just. It. It looked like it was a scary thing. Did the. Uh, did you feel comfortable that the state police who provide protection for you and other people at the Capitol uh, were, were had things under control, or did you worry that it could get ugly? Um. So I will say this: our um, Capitol police, our sergeants at arms, our um, Michigan State Police did a really, really good job of keeping folks in that building safe yesterday, and. I commend them immensely. Um, you know, for me during session, I wasn't really able to see the, what was happening outside of those doors uh, that they were protecting, um, you know, from frankly, um, I'm just gonna call it like I saw it, it was an angry mob. Um, people were screaming and yelling. Um, when we were trying to do business in the chamber, there was a dull roar. You could hear a, like a dull roar of just like people's voices just screaming and yelling. Um, and, you know, coming to find out after I got home, went back and reviewed some of the video that was taken and 
I mean, they were screaming, let us in. And like at the threshold of the floor of the house where guests are not allowed on the floor of the house unless they're pre-approved. That, that group of people was not going to be allowed there to begin with. Um, and so it, you know, it was um, definitely something that I, I, I called it surreal yesterday. It's not something I ever expected uh, to be um, confronting when serving. At the no, and I've been, I've been uh, in, and, in and out of the uh, journalistic business for many years here in the state of Michigan. And when I've been in, I've been covering statewide issues and spent a lot of time at the Capitol. And I was kind of surprised what I saw on television yesterday. Let's get back to the issues at hand. So the governor is trying to open things up. And step by step, we're going to get construction open up on the home construction, open up on the 7th. That should have a big impact on our Oakland County communities that are tuning in today. A lot of residential construction has been suspended. Uh, we've got, you know, different retail establishments opening up. The big boxes have opened up a little more. Uh, step by step, we are seeing things open. We now have dates for um, our, uh, our our campgrounds opening up around the state of Michigan. It won't be for Memorial Day, but those are starting right. to open up. So we're starting to see things open up, and I assume, I assume we're going to see uh, manufacturing begin to open up here in the state of Michigan. We we haven't heard a date from the governor, but we assume all that is going on. Are you happy with the way things are going? And I know you're a Democrat, and she's a Democrat, so you may not be able to say anything you I want. Mean, but well, are you happy with the way thing. it's going? So, so I just want to make a quick clarification from sure. something you said at the top. Um, uh, the extension to uh, May 28th is not an extension of stay home, stay safe. It's an extension of the emergency declaration. Um, those are two different things. Correct. And it's okay. Um, it, it, people conflate the two all the time. Um, it can be a, a little bit confusing. Um, so I'm just going to take a second to outline the difference between those two things, because I think it's incredibly important for folks to understand what that difference is. Um, so stay home, stay safe is the order that we're currently under, right? So um, you shouldn't be leaving your uh, personal dwelling for anything other than um, essential goods, or if you have ordered something for contactless delivery from, or contactless pickup or delivery from um, any establishment that's offering that right now. Um, however, the state of emergency doesn't have anything to do with you having to stay in your home. The state of emergency is what is important for us to be able to do uh, what we can to draw down federal dollars to have us address the crisis, right? So um, those are your tax dollars you've already paid in your federal taxes that we need to be able to access as a state in order to um, get PPE to our fire departments and our first responders, um, also to pay hazard pay to those folks. And the concern that I had uh, when there was debate about not extending the state of emergency was uh, many other states around the country have already extended their states of emergency, which means that they're drawing from that same pot of money that we already are. So if we give up on that, if we say no thank you, where are we going to get the money from? Right? We've already paid those taxes to the feds. That's our money that we should be, be, be able to draw from. And so for me, a state of emergency extension was a no-brainer. Um, we already know that there's going to be some major budget shortfalls this year, um, and we should be doing everything we can to capture federal dollars. Uh, Mari, thank you for uh, for making that clear, and I apologize if I misspoke. Uh, stay at home runs through currently the 15th of the month yep. and 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 we're again i think we're seeing a lot of really good moves uh, by the governor to begin to open things up which should make people happy that want to see things open up quicker but um uh, leaving all the political leaving everything that happened yesterday yeah. all that stuff aside for a second it seems like the issue right now is can we open up some communities in michigan sooner than other communities in Michigan. That's that's the core issue. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, we've seen through a couple of different plans um, an idea of uh, sort of this regionalism approach. And um, frankly, uh, when the GOP plan came out, uh, the idea of opening things up regionally wasn't all that bad. Um, my biggest concern was that there wasn't really any um, increase in testing that was outlined in that plan. Um, in the current version of the governor's plan, um, it does base a lot of what those decisions are made on in science and sort of that data-driven approach that, you know, we need to understand how much testing we can get done, whether or not that testing can happen, are we doing screenings um, as people are going into work. 
Um, but the thing about the regionalism piece, I just want to highlight that in the last 10 days, there's actually been a 190% increase in positive cases in Kent County, a 230% increase in Ionia County, and a 133% increase in Allegan County in cases, and a, and a 97% increase in Kalamazoo County. So it looks like things are um, getting better for us here in the Metro Detroit area, but there are other parts of our state that are seeing a major uptick and an upswing in cases. Um, and so, you know, as uh, we continue to collect that data and have a better understanding of how this virus is spreading, um, we do need to, you know, be mindful that um, there are some communities that are still uh, very hard hit right now. Anything uh, you want to say to folks right here at home? And thank you for sharing all that. I appreciate that. We have been seeing those peaks in West Michigan, and, you know, it really is scary. And uh, they're they're going to go through over there what we went through over here on our side of the state. So uh, we wish the best for them, and, and hopefully uh, they'll get their curve flattened out as well. Um, anything else happening close to home? Anything else you want to talk to folks in uh, your own backyard and in your district about before we say so long? I mean, the one thing I'll just continue to say is if you have um, the means, please continue to um, support our local small businesses here. Um, I'm in Birmingham, so have picked up uh, takeout a couple nights this past week um, that I hadn't been doing previously. And just want to say how um, wonderful and professional everyone has been, how quick and easy it is to do all of that. Um, so if you have the ability to do it, um, continue to support our small businesses so they're here for us uh, when all of this is over. It's, um, you know, Birmingham was on fire right before all this happened. We were just talking to uh, Stuart Sherman. I don't know if you heard that or not. I'm sure you know yep. him. Um, but, you know, Birmingham's, know on, on, well. <laughs> Birmingham's on fire. We're getting ready to, you know, do infrastructure improvements right on Maple Road right now. And, and a new hotel and a lot of great establishments. Everything's going great. So uh, we hope as this comes to a close that Birmingham and all of our other communities around our area will rebound and and we want all the businesses that can to be with us uh, as this uh, all comes back. So um, I exactly. applaud and support what you just said about getting out there and supporting those restaurants. So, uh, Mari Manugian, thank you. It's, it's always great having you on. I appreciate it. Um, you represent our district well, and good to talk to you today. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, guys. Take care. Mari Manugian, 40th District here in uh, in our area and uh, from our state representative. Uh, 40th, I didn't say that very well. You know what I'm trying to say, Tyler. You know what I'm trying to say. I know. She is our state representative from the 40th District. There you go. There it is. All right, we're going to take a break. It's been a long, oh my goodness, it's, it's been a long week. Uh, we're going to be back in a minute. We're going to check in with my friends Byron and Michelle Conselmo from their home in West Bloomfield. They are musicians. They're going to be doing a Facebook concert later on today. It's going to be really cool, raising some money. And uh, they're following all the rules. They're just doing a really raw Facebook concert live from their basement. And uh, those they could sing. It's going to be a they lot can. of fun. They can. They're, yeah. they're very good. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to check in on them in just a moment. We'll take a quick break. We will be back. This is the Megacast on Civic Center TV, Birmingham Area Municipal Access, Lakes FM, the BIF 89.5 Avondale Community Radio, and today on our West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Facebook page. Back in a moment. Hi, my name is Kurt Lawson, and I'm the Public Information Officer for West Bloomfield Township. We wanted to reach out to you, our older adults, to provide information that you may find useful during this difficult time. We want to ensure you that West Bloomfield Town Hall our Waters and Utility Department, West Bloomfield Parks, and our Police and Fire Departments continue to work hard on your behalf. Information and resources can be found on the Township website, the Police Facebook and Twitter, or call West Bloomfield Parks COVID-19 Help Hotline. Please remember to keep your social distance of at least six feet, wear facial coverings when you leave your home, and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap. These precautions will help keep you safe during these difficult times. Hi, I'm Dr. Faust, the Medical Director for the Oakland County Health Division. The most important thing you can do to prevent the spread of illness is to wash your hands thoroughly and often. Follow these six easy steps every time you wash your hands. Step one, turn on the sink and wet your hands with warm water. Step two, apply soap to your hands and lather between your fingers, under your nails, and the front and back of your hands and wrists. Step three, wash your hands by scrubbing them together for at least 20 seconds. Step four, rinse your hands with warm, clean water. And step five, dry your hands with a clean cloth towel, a paper towel, or hot air blow dryer. If you're using a cloth towel, make sure to change it often. 
for handheld faucets. Turn off the water using a paper towel instead of your bare hand. Step six, if you're using a paper towel, throw it away. Practice healthy habits like washing your hands after coughing or sneezing into them to keep you and others healthy. Go to oakgov.com health or call Nurse on Call at 1-800-848-5533 to learn more. All right, welcome, uh, welcome back to the MegaCast on Civic Center TV on uh, Channel 15 on Birmingham Area Municipal uh, Television, Channel 15 as well on Comcast, Channel 99 on at t You can tune into our channels. You can go to civiccentertv.com and watch Birmingham, uh, not Birmingham, but the West Bloomfield Chamber has us on their Facebook Live channel. And uh, we are on our radio stations, 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 The Biff, 89.5 Avondale Community Radio. And Tyler, wow, I, you know, I just, I was thinking uh, a moment ago that it, it was only a week ago. I mean, everything is so compressed. There's so much going on. It was only a week ago that that none of these uh, new um, loosened up uh, opportunities throughout this uh, coronavirus um, and these changes in the executive orders. Uh, these were all first announced at about this time a week ago. And, and in that time, let's go down the list if we can just do it off the top of our head. Uh, in that time... Uh, we have extended the stay-at-home order, of course, to the yes. 15th, uh, 15th of May. But we have uh, allowed motorboats to get out on the, on the lakes. We, we've also allowed the marinas to launch them. And in our lakes area, that's a huge deal. So the boats yes. are getting out on the water. Golfers, glory be, we are golfing again. Uh, no, we're going we're gonna to leave the golf cart there, but we're going to golf. Yep. And uh, I, have you seen people busy on the golf courses? I haven't noticed. I've seen a few people out and about the last couple of days as I've driven home uh, up Walnut Lake Road from our building here. I've seen a couple of people out on the links, but not as many as I've been expecting. It's probably just the time of the day. Sure. And, and I... Uh, I, I'm really glad the whole lawn mowing thing got sorted out. That got sorted out, so you, you could cut your own grass, but you couldn't get anybody to help you cut your grass. So now the whole landscaping community, they're keeping their social distancing. They are back at work, and that's really good news. The construction industry is coming back on the 7th of May. Home construction is returning, and that's a huge story because, you know, we had homes that were partially under construction, and they had to stop. Yeah, and, and now they're going to have a chance to hopefully finish some of those pro projects or at least make enough progress on them that maybe by the end of the fall they could be done. So a lot of progress being made there also. It was only a week ago that all the ambiguity over what you could buy and not buy at a big box retailer uh, was cleared up. I mean, it was a, a week and an hour ago that you couldn't buy a can of paint, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, at a big box retailer. Now that whole thing has gotten sorted, has, has been sorted out. So uh, that's all good. You can go to a big box retailer. you got to keep your space. Um, we uh, we affirmed in the state of Michigan that masks are a good thing. And everywhere you go now, and it was just a week ago, everywhere you go now, every store, every time you're inside somewhere other than your home, people are wearing masks. And people are doing a really good job, Tyler. They are. I've seen a lot of people out and about wearing the masks at the grocery store a couple days ago. I saw the vast majority of the people that were in the store with me at the time were wearing their masks and were keeping their distance and doing a really good job of that. And, and now we find that, uh, that, that uh, we haven't heard the official word. We're going to get it soon, but we've not heard the official word. But soon we, I'm sure, are going to hear that manufacturing in the state of Michigan is going to be, uh, they're going to be deploying it at some level. The auto plants uh, have had people in the plants preparing them for, uh, for opening, so we know that's coming. We've not seen an announcement, but I expect we're going to hear that in the next week or so. And, and those auto plants, uh, really one of the more difficult uh, areas to get, get running again, manufacturing, that we're going to see that come back as well. Yeah, I would expect an announcement on that in the next week. Uh, I, I would expect to have a date down path, kind of like we have with construction. Mm -hmm. Sometime next week, I don't think it's going to open up next week necessarily. I think they're going to give it a couple of weeks beyond that to really get the plans in place from manufacturer to manufacturer 
uh, before that happens. And then getting uh, getting our retail, getting our retail rolling. Right now, uh, again, another big thing that happened last Friday that has been implemented now for uh, several days, and that is retail estab- establishments can uh, uh, can and are providing curbside service, and we're seeing that, and it's working pretty well. Yeah, it's been working really well for the restaurants throughout this process, and now uh, these retailers have had a lot of time to be able to prepare and to some extent for that if they were prepared well out, well out from today or um, if they began to prepare after last week's executive order and are, are getting to the point where they can start doing curbside it's going to really help that that side of the business community as well we uh, we have seen unfortunately that uh, cranes detroit business today reporting that 1.26 million people have uh, lost their jobs since march so that is really sad news uh we know the campgrounds are going to be open and now we have a date uh memorial day camping isn't going to happen but our rustic campgrounds are going to open up on the 10th and our parks and marinas the state parks and the state campgrounds and marinas are going to open um on the 22nd of june so that's all really good news yeah and recreation coming back too and that's a huge part of recreation in the state of Michigan as well. So having the, having the boating industry come back will also be huge for the state. So uh, be careful um, as you're doing what you do. You know, do be, do be careful uh, to make sure that you follow the rules so we're not uh, spreading the coronavirus any worse uh, as we begin to open things up. But we're hoping uh, that everyone does what they need to do to, uh, to be able to get... Uh, Get 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 things opened up and get things opened up in a safe way. And and just to be careful, we see what's going on in West Michigan right now, Tyler, and that is uh, certainly of some deep concern. So listen, we got about a minute. Took a little longer to get connected, but I think that uh, Byron uh, he can't hear. Yeah, he should be able to hear me. Yeah. Byron Kinselmo, Byron and Michelle Kinselmo are here, uh, guys. It took a little longer to get connected to you, so we only got a minute or two. But thank you for joining us here as we wrap up our week in the MegaCast. How you doing? So we are not hearing you. We're going to have to. Larry's got to hit, hit a button or two. Larry, Byron, can we hear you? Uh, all right, this isn't going well. But well, we can see you. Can you hear me, Byron? Just nod if you can hear us. Yeah, I think you can. So we, I'm really sorry. So let me just share because we can't unfortunately hear you. We can see you. Let me just share the fact that if you go to Byron and Michelle Consalmo's Facebook page, that uh, they're going to have a concert today. So hold up your fingers for what time is it going to be? Five or is it going to be six or seven? What time is it going to happen? It's going to be what is that? Four. It's going to be. Four and five, nine o'clock tonight. Is that right? Okay, let's see if we can hear you again. Are you there? Can you hear us? Okay, we still can't hear them. So unfortunate, but uh, listen, just go to Byron and Michelle Consemel's Facebook page, and uh, they will uh, have a concert for you later on today. You guys, we'll get you back on a Monday. I'm really sorry it didn't work out any better. Two wonderful people, great musicians. And uh, if you can find them on Facebook, there's going to be a free concert. It's happening uh, sometime later on today and tonight. And it's going to be all happening for charity. And I really apologize that we were not able to get all the uh, all the audio work in here. But thank you, guys. I know you put an effort to get on the show with us. So we'll do it Monday. And then, you know what we're going to do next week? We're going to get all the buttons and dials uh, tuned in so we can have you uh, perform for us on the Megacast if we can do that. All right? Good. They're nodding. You guys look great. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you know, we, I think we got almost every Zoom in this week except that one. That's a pretty good batting average. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And with all the issues that can come up on a Zoom call, you know, your mic doesn't work on your end, but you're <laughs> unmuted or whatever happens. You know, oh. there's so much that can go wrong that with our batting average, I think we're doing a pretty good job. All right. So thank you, everyone, for being a part of our broadcast today and throughout the week. Um, We will be back here next week. We're continuing to look for new ways uh, to get the message out and communicate with you across the area. I just want to remind you that if you have not gone to CivicCenterTV.com, no matter where you are in our listening area, that we invite you to do that. There's a ton of information 
all of the interviews and segments and people we've talked to over the over the past week or two, and that includes some really great interviews like Dan Dickerson, the play-by-play voice of the Detroit Tigers, talking sports. Dan Miller was with us, uh, the play-by-play voice of the Detroit Lions, uh, the top business leaders, Dave Coulter from Oakland County, um, and on and on. They All the interviews we've done over the past several weeks are all there. We invite you to check them out at civiccentertv.com along with our information. A huge Thanks to uh, our producer, Jeff, who does an amazing job, and Larry Nyland, who is our Zoom producer, who I would say is, bit, he's batting about nine ninety nine. We he just We he's missed that last job. one, but he's been doing really good That's getting awesome. everybody on. So uh, we thank Larry for all that. And a huge thanks to our outlets and, and the mothership, Civic Center TV and uh, lakesfm.com and the Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commission, the Birmingham Area Municipal Access, and uh, and everyone there. Uh, we appreciate you guys helping uh, get the word out and, and taking our broadcast. Thanks to Ron Whittable, 88.1 WBFH, the Biff. Glad to have you on board today and all week and over the past month. And WAHS 89.5 Avondale Community Radio. Thank you, uh, Logan. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz and, uh, and everybody there. So that is our broadcast for today. Have a very safe, very safe weekend and next week the weather's going to be beautiful keep your social distance if you get out to the parks and you get out on your bike and you start uh, enjoying recreation in michigan please be careful keep your social distancing put that mask on when you go to the grocery store and do all you can to keep everyone safe that's the megacast have a great weekend